Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom left hand corner, we have Advil starting as the Red Terran. Bottom right hand corner, we have Aegis starting as the Blue Zerg. This is BSL Season 16. Round of 16 of Group C. You're tied up one game apiece. So it is do or die on Neo Sylphid. And I'm expecting more. We've seen two opening mech gambits. I'm expecting a third from Advil. And this is a strong map for Vultures to raid this natural expansion. You don't even have a ramp that you need to run up. So if we see Vulture play once again, considering how successful the Vulture raid was in game two, I would not be shocked to see it be successful in game three. And I'm wondering if Aegis is going to make the SimCity a little bit more tight, is going to play a little bit more defensively. Game one, we saw he could take down a game with solid macro. Game two, we saw that uh, Advil can really make the mech hum. Let's see, actually, if he opts to shift strategies as well. Overlord making its way to the 12 o'clock location for Aegis. I would be very surprised to see him opt for something non-mech, because often, oftentimes when you see players do something that's kind of their game plan or what they've kind of sidled into overall, I'm actually a little bit surprised that more Terran don't go mech versus Zerg at this particular level period. There is a certain point where you do need a, a, a grain of wisdom that Artosis is kind of garnered. Is at some point you do need a, an alter, uh, alternate, and all that I can't talk of was an un alternative. Why is that so hard to say? Un alternative, un, un alternative build. There we go. It's able to spit it out. And the third looks like we are seeing a gas grab. This suggests we are going to see Mech here. You do need uh, a few alternative builds to keep your opponents on their toes. But I feel like it isn't until you get towards the, um, I don't know, 2000-ish MMR mark where Zerg really successfully are able to shut down mech play when they know it's coming time and time again. Drone harassing that SCV, able to get first scout over there. The Overlord going to hover over that edge. SCV making its way should be able to confirm the hatchery, and it looks like Aegis is going to adjust his build by going for three hatch before gas. So recognizing that it might be yet another mech build, opting to try to get a head start in the overall macro war by having more larvae available. That front door is sealed, factory being constructed, single SCV on gas, spawning pool, and a later gas grab. This does provide a lot of flexibility and usually provides more just raw larva to get that drone count higher earlier. And in mech versus, I want to say mech versus zerg, in turn versus zerg when it is uh, a mech play, it really is a race of economies more than anything else. Because mech is expensive and it's just about getting mass and survive. For zerg, it's about getting mass and surviving initially and shutting down your opponent. And for Terran, it's about, yeah, getting that killing blow, just having the overwhelming mass. SV making its way out with the initial marine, the drone having taken damage, going to pull its way out. And Overlord is making its way to provide additional scouting information. It looks like the an already uh, wow very early preventative creep colony morphing into sunken colony to make absolute sure that there's at least some defense against an initial vulture. Let's see if there's. If it's going to be a Hydralis Den follow-up to provide additional clutter towards the front, the SCV is going to have trouble exiting the base at this stage. It's got to maintain a lot of health to be able to soak up the damage. Overlord going a little bit too far out here, and this was another scenario where I do worry about Aegis doing this in a couple of his games where he really does move that Overlord deep into his opponent's territory. Losing an Overlord at this stage of the, ma uh, this stage of the match can be critical, and if there are a handful of Marines right there, that might have been an Overlord kill, although they would have really had to be on top of it. Second Vulture in construction. Let's see if the SV actually could make its way back and kite Evolution Chamber, creating a nice barricade. Now at that front, that SCV is taking sufficient damage where I don't know that it's going to be able to be much of an influence on the front. Mostly just has to stay in the base. I don't know that it's confirmed the Hydra will extend towards the main. It's at least confirmed that there's a lack of a layer. So he's going more up against tier one units. The Vulture hanging out near that natural expansion. Looks like a second Vulture is going to join it. 
No third vulture, but a machine shop. Actually, there is a third vulture, so it looks like it's going to be initial four vultures out in the field. I just didn't get a good look at the mini-map and the count. Hydralisk's insufficient numbers should be able to shut this down and allow Aegis to drone up. Right now, he's in a pretty good spot economically. The vultures now moving their way and just going to suicide as the Hydralisks aren't quite in position to defend, only able to get a single drone and do a little bit of economic disruption at the natural. That is going to give Advil a slight worker lead. But as the Hydral's count grows, and it looks like actually moving out, they're going to go ahead and press the 6 o'clock? Looks like, yeah, moving out on the field, maybe wanting to press the natural expansion. There's only, there's no bunker and a single marine, actually, and no mines out in the field as well. This is the first Goliath in construction. So these, and these are very heavily damaged vultures. So these five Hydralisks actually could be a menace and really even things up. It's going to take group repair on that Goliath to equalize things. SCV recognized the Hydralisk threat, threat at the natural. I like this play from Aegis. Diving in, actually able to, try to clog up the natural and the main. A Marine able to get on the other side. Barracks floating over the Goliath, but it's still able to get focus fired. Now it's, unfortunately, that I think this is blocking out group repair. Trying to land, but the Hydralis is able to get on the other side. So no group repair for the Goliaths. And now Advil, uh, unfortunately, going to take some SEV damage in his main. So yeah, you can run Vultures across, but Zerg has units that can do that sort of thing too. And the Goliaths keep getting stranded away from the SEVs, which is allowing the Hydralisks to just get bonus. One versus four, not good odds. Now the SEV is able to finally pull off the line. This is a huge amount of economic disruption. The Goliaths, where are they going? Not grouping up to join the defense. The Marine dying nigh instantaneously. Two Hydralists down, primarily to SCVs doing the work for themselves. Another Goliath spawning right at the moment. It looks like it is going to be able to clean things up, but that was a lot of Goliaths to take initial hits. It looks like there's some mines in between to do some disruption of reinforcements, but now Hydralists are pouring across the map towards the natural there's a bunker but no marine as of yet and it's going to be three goliaths versus a slew of hydralisks shortly so aegis might have a killing blow sooner rather than later and plus one weapons is now finishing so it is going to be a brutally tough defense siege tank constructing initial marine is not there they're focus firing the bunker regardless and really didn't mean to and this is just not sufficient defense it looks like aegis has done it found a disruptive timing and gotten massive well before Advil was able to with his mech army all sorts of SCVs just getting obliterated there's GG good old Hydras indeed if you guys enjoyed the match overall please give a like and subscribe it is sad seeing Advil being knocked out as he is a friend of the chat but uh, regardless hope to see him in future seasons of Hasu League Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.